Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Any advice on learning to control your nafs? So learning to control your nafs is something we broadly call tazkiyatun nafs, purifying the nafs. It's part of it anyway. And it's alluded to in the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا that successful is the one who purifies their nafs. And it's also alluded to in the statement of Allah uh, Whoever fears standing before their Lord and prohibits their soul from what it craves, Jannah will be their abode. So we have to understand that this, there, are, there are two things that pollute the nafs. One of the things that pollutes the nafs is, as we said, a shubuhat. And that is the issue of misconceptions, misguidance, confusion, and so on. The second thing which corrupts the nafs, and this is the one that we're talking about here, is shahawat. And that is when a person knows what they are doing is wrong and they crave it, their nafs craves it. So they fall into it because their nafs craves it. And in this, I would highly recommend that uh, you read some of the books of Ibn al-Qayyim, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala. And there are quite a few that have been brought into English and Ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah ta'ala as well. And there are quite a few that have been brought into English which deal with the issue of the nafs and purifying the nafs. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just sort of talking from memory, but there are, if you were to look through, you know, the, uh, like an English bookstore, and you look for some of the books of Ibn al-Qayyim and Ibn al-Jawzi, uh, and um, even some of the books of Ibn al-Rajab as well, uh, rahimahumullah ta'ala, which have been translated into English, which deal with the nafs and purifying the nafs and controlling the nafs is a great deal of benefit. But something I, I benefited from Ibn al-Qayyim, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, which I personally uh, found it to be very, very uh, profound. And that is the issue of filling the heart with the love of Allah. And that when your heart is full of love of Allah, and you, you really love Allah as he deserves to be loved because of what you know of him and his names, his attributes and his actions, and because of what you have learnt of your religion, and you really love Allah as he deserves to be loved, then you start to only love what Allah loves, and you start to hate what Allah hates, and you start to find that your nafs becomes more in line with what Allah Azza wa Jal loves, uh, even though your nafs is ammaratun bisu, it's always inclined towards evil. So it's not the case that your nafs is going to be free of issues, um, but it, it could be the case that your nafs bega begins to become closer towards what Allah loves because you find there's no space in your heart for something that Allah doesn't love. You want your heart to just be full of everything that Allah loves because of your love of Allah. So that comes through knowing Islam and it comes through knowing Allah and his names and attributes and his and his actions. And it also comes through building on the fara'id with the nawafil because of the hadith. وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِ يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ that my servant will not cease to, to come close to me with the voluntary deeds after the obligatory deeds until I love him. So that also comes from, from that aspect as well. And those are just a few points, but I think if you were to read some of the books that have been written on this topic, there are some amazing books on the issue of the nafs, which have been translated into English and controlling the nafs, which have been translated into English and Allah knows best.